third john in verse 2 third john in verse 2 and i'm talking about dealing with mindsets that makes success difficult dealing with mindsets that makes success difficult dealing with mindsets that makes success difficult third john verse 2 the bible says this this way it says he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may it prosper, even as what? As your soul prospers. He says, I wish you prosper even as your soul prospers. And, and why am I saying this to you? The reason why I'm saying this to you is this. This is the reason why I'm saying this. He says, I wish you prosper even as your soul prospers. So all of a sudden, God is saying that all areas of your prosperity is connected to your soul. This is very powerful. He says, your marital prosperity is, is, is what is attached to the prosperity of your soul. Your financial prosperity is attached to the prosperity of your soul. What is a soul anyway? The soul is a part of the human the soul, because man is a spirit, is, he lives in a body and he has a soul. The soul is a part of you that houses three things, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your, your soul is what makes all the decision. That's where your, the seat of decision is in the soul. I, I'm trying to jump so that I can link it together. So what does this have to do with me? What this has to do with me is very simple, which is very powerful. What this has to do with me is very powerful. What does it have to do with me? Whatever controls my soul controls my life. So, this is why he says in 3 John verse 2. He says, beloved, I wish you prosper even as your soul prosper. Whatever controls my soul controls my life. This is the reason. See, when you watch television adverts and you watch all those things, what they are trying to do is to buy your soul. They want a market share in your soul. You know why? If they have your soul, you will make a decision. If they have your soul, you will make a decision. That's what they would. So whatever affects your soul, affects your life. And the reason I'm saying so is this. Whatever controls your mind, controls your life. The soul is very powerful. So the question is this. They have my remote control right now. Remote control. The question is this. The remote control controls the television. But the question is, who holds the, who holds the remote control? So what is controlling your soul? Is it fear controlling your soul? What is controlling your soul? Is it revenge controlling your soul? Is it selfishness controlling your soul? Is it greed controlling your soul? Because within your soul is mindset. So also what's mindset? Bring, can I get the clock? What is the mindset? What is the mindset? I'll show you what the mindset looks like. You can have, have this. Yeah, praise the Lord. I'll show you what the mindset looks like. This is what the mindset looks like. I take this clock. And I set it. What's the time on this clock? Is it 3 o'clock? Is it 3 o'clock right now? What? That's where I've what? Set it. What is the mindset anywhere you set your mind on? That's what the mindset is. What's your mindset? Whatever you set your mind on. And the reason I'm saying so is that it's not three o'clock, but this clock says it's three o'clock because of what it sets it on. The question to you is that a lot is going on in life. What did you set your mind on? And whatever you set your mind on becomes what? Your mindset. Whatever you set your mind on becomes your mindset. What are you setting your mind on? So, are you setting on? Are you setting your mind on poverty, or you're setting your mind on abundance? Are you setting your mind? What are you setting your mind on? That's the question. What are you setting your mind on? In life, good and bad always happen. But what you set your mind on becomes your mindset. So, if you keep looking at all the bad things in life, guess what will happen? That will become your mindset. If you keep looking at all the good things in life, guess what will happen? That will become your mindset. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So, whatever controls your mind controls your life. So, if fear... A fear can has this is why I'm saying this. If I'll give an example. Um, 
who bought something expensive this last week anybody here something expensive this last week anybody here you bought something very expensive you did what did you buy says did you, did you oh not you who bought some? okay last in the last one month who bought something let's talk something very expensive you bought something that was quite you know quite pricey you know anybody what price is relative but pricey to you it was quite pricey to you anybody there's a lady over there i want someone in front because of this I, uh, the ease of microphone i want someone who, who, who is that someone who, who? okay give me the microphone give them what can you share with me what you bought yeah. can you share with me what you bought i bought a truck you bought a truck yes why did you buy a truck for business for business yes sir okay what make is a truck a mercedes-benz oh why didn't you buy a kia truck no. huh no. why didn't you buy a nissan truck durability is what i you know is it durability mm. the truth is that i agree with you about durability but at the end of the day you bought that because they bought your soul first yes or no yes sir because somewhere in your mind mercedes best was yeah. I don't like that's it. what it means do you see that's why i say whatever controls your soul controls your life so as soon as mercedes said when it comes to car mercedes bought his soul what did he do in life he bought their car the question is that whatever has your soul will have you in life question if it was fear that buys his soul what would he put this in life fearful things that's why the Bible says this. Third John verse 2. He says, Beloved, you will prosper as your soul prospers. Like, whatever you were going to go in the direction of your soul. That's what he's saying. So the question is this. Why are people not doing well? The reason why is that because their soul is not prospering. Oh, glory to God. I said, someone say hallelujah. So you see people it's fear that drives them you see people it's poverty that drives them you see people it's abundance that drives them the question is that it's your life who has the remote control of your life in your hands oh Sam, thank you jesus the second thing about the mind why is it powerful is this what so the first thing whatever controls your soul or your mind controls your life the second thing is this whatever is too big for your mind becomes too big for your life whatever is too big whatever is too big for your mind becomes too big for your life genesis chapter 13 verse 14 yeah genesis chapter 13 verse 14 genesis chapter 13 verse 14 someone say hallelujah Genesis chapter 13 verse 14. What does the Bible say? Okay, let's look at this. So remember we're talking about mindset. Mindset, right? Genesis chapter 13 verse 14. And the Lord said to Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up thy eyes, and from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Let's read together now. One to go. For, can you go back, please? We've read this place. Can you, can you keep going? Yeah, want to go verse 15. Hold on. For what? Keep going. Did he say all the land? I will give you all the land or all the land you see. Question. Was he saying with his eyes or with his mind? My God. He didn't say I will give you all the land. He says all the land that your, men, your mindset can contain is what I will give to you. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? He says, All the ma- he says, What you can contain is what I will give to you. The reason I'm saying this, and this is very powerful, this is very powerful. whatever is too big for your mind is too big for your life. Let me explain that to you. I hope you know that Nehemiah, Ezra, they were, they were what they call it, they were slaves, and they negotiated with the king to build their village to build their country to be jerusalem how does a slave think like that mentality possibility mentality god told him he says 
he says the land is there but it's only what you see that will give to you the question that what can you see many what can you see i know you work in a bank but can you see yourself at the sea of the bank what can you see can you see yourself as a minister of the gospel what can you see can you see yourself married you know some time ago i was helping some single ladies that were in their 40s i was praying with them and doing a coaching class for them to help them get married and i just really wish i can still do that again i hope i get the time to do it again because we had so many testimonies from it and this lady one of the assignments i gave them was that i told them to go to a wedding store and try out a wedding gown just something to see and this is this she went to the wedding store and they gave her the wedding card i was aside he said as i attempted to wear it he said i broke down and said crying he said it occurred to me i had no mental image that i was going to be married but she was praying for it but she had never seen it question what can you see you know during wine press one of our leaders came and he had not come to the ministry for about 90 he left for during the first day of the ministry and when he came he told me i was just crying 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 i said why was i crying he said all these things you were saying when we we're 10 15 20 everything is happening he said you can't remember you said this i could even remember some of those things he said i was like god look at it i said you know and, and you know when he said that i was laughing i said because even though others don't see it if you see it it will happen the question is what do you see are you so moved by the difficulty around you you can't see anything What can you see? Glory to God. I said glory to God. As far, I want to ask you, what can you see? Can you see your wedding? Can you see your company? You see, don't say I'm a roadside catcher. Can you see your international catcher company? Don't say I'm just a tailor. Can you see your brand as big as TM Lewin? Can you see it? Can you see your rise to become the first female, you know, so, so, and so, and so in the whole of Africa? Can you see it? What can you see? Or what do you see? I'm, I'm just a hustler. The Bible says this. He says, as far as your eyes can see, it will give to you. Question, what can you see? Our name is Harvest. The name of our church is Harvesters International Christian Center. We didn't add the international when we became international. Even when we're very local, originally local, totally local, purely local, locally made, our name was international because that's what we saw. Today we are international because we saw it first. The question is that what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? whatever you cannot imagine you cannot deliver you will never act beyond what you see let me show you a story luke chapter 16 verse 21 you know um I, there was a story I, I went to disney world for a course many years ago and uh you know I, maybe i'm the only one that went to disney world and never took a ride you know because i was there for many days and i never went on a ride and i went to disney world because i was doing this course and it was back to back and one of the things they said was that when Disney World was being launched, one of the, one of the speakers said, I wish Mr. Walt, Mr. Walt Disney was here to see it. And his wife rose up and said, he actually saw it. We are the ones that are just seeing it. He said, he saw it in his mind. He said, we are the ones that are just seeing it. He says, as far as what your mindset does is this, it gives you possibility thinking. You will start that company, but you can see Abuja branch. You will start that company, you can see Dubai branch. You will start that company, you can see the US branch. You can see construction going on in different countries in your construction company. Because as far as your eyes can see. You can see, you can see clearly, you will become one of the, you know, um, what's that Nigerian word again? Order of the Federal Republic. You can see clearly that one day they will call on you for excellence in your field, you will get up and you will march and they will say, and the president will put the badge there and they will say, this is the first film from our state and that will be you. Glory to God. You will see, let me tell you something. I, I saw it 
when I was, I went for a meeting when I was 22 years old. They called for an offering. I saw it clearly. I didn't have it. They were said, if you can give this up, I didn't have it. And I told God, I said, my first one millionaire is given. Five years after that, I was able to give my first one millionaire. The reason why is that before I had it, I saw it. What you become is what you saw. Are you here? Do you see it? You walk in the bank. Do you see yourself in the CEO office? How do you see your future? And there's a way I see my future. There's a way I see my future. How do you see your future? Not too long ago, I, I, I know one of my friends is, is a lawyer, older friend. He's about 20 years older than I'm, I am. I remember that I've been close to him since I was maybe 12 years old and we used to talk a lot. And one day recently he called me and he said that, well, we were no, we're no longer close because I'm in mean, distance and we don't see each other again. He said, but I just want to tell you that there's nothing that happens in your life that I'm surprised with. He said, everybody's surprised but I'm not surprised. I said, why? He said, because when you were 13 or 14, you wrote all these things down. You were challenging me. You were telling me these things. And I'll keep telling you that uh, you are young. You don't know what life is. You are young. Don't you see, I was the one that was stupid. He said, I didn't know you were the one that was intelligent. Because everything you said, I'm seeing it happen in front of me. The power of your mind. Luke chapter 16 verse 21. Luke 16 verse 21. Let's go. I want us to hurry. There's a, there's a lot of ground we have to cover. Luke 16 verse 21. Look at what the Bible says. Let's read from verse 20. This is a story of a man called Lazarus. Not the one that died. This Lazarus is a poor man. Hope you know the story of the when the, 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 there was a rich man and a poor man. Hope you know the story, right? Yes or no? So one went to hell, one went to heaven. My concern was that why was the poor guy that went to heaven, why was he poor? Maybe God is trying to tell us that if you are going to go to heaven, no, poverty will be your portion. So we need to know so that we can prepare our mind once and for all and not be praying for what is not there. So let's look at it. The Bible says, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, the rich man's gate, full of what sores. He was a beggar, righteous. He went to heaven. Next verse. Let's read together. I want to go. Can you see why he was poor? His desire was to be fed with prompts. All he saw was that he would eat from somebody else's hand. All he saw was that he would eat from someone else's hand. That's all he saw. He said his desire was to be fed from the crumbs. Hey, he, his desire was to be fed from the crumbs. He was holy but had poverty mentality. Look at it. He went to heaven but his desire. Some of you, if I just buy brand new car, is that all your life is about? Ah, if I just went to Canada and so what? If, you know, some people, when they tell you their vision, you wonder, and so what? There's more to life than that. The way you're, the way you're driving this, your second hand, this is your second hand baby boy. Hey, hey, hey. You, you, you will drive, you will pull the chair to the back, you will take the glass, put big speaker. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Listen, hope you know your car is not brand new. Because there's something see one should be grateful for where you are but there's something about over celebrating the present that can kill the future look at what it says the bible says he was desiring he was just desire that was just his desire his desire was simple that he will be fed from the ground. question what is your mentality Many of you want to wed. You say, that, hey, when I want to wed, people will help me. What kind of terrible mentality is that? Why don't you think you'll be so rich you can solve for your wedding? So there are guys that are looking for how to marry a rich, a rich, a rich man's wife, a um, daughter. What kind, of, what kind of stupid thinking is that? When you want to marry, you'll be checking passports. There are some ladies also. Once he doesn't have a don't you don't look at his side. Listen to me. Say, I don't want. He say, why? I don't want the liability. Don't you understand? I, I want to marry someone that can take care of me. Listen to me. You are so blessed if he marries you. He marries wealth. Yeah. Praise God. You see, you must understand something. Whatever is too big for your mind is too big for your life. There's something small thinking, small thinking, small thinking, small thinking kills us. That's why the government will put things in the in the station 
I, I remember one time they, they installed um, over high bridge and put aluminium. Nigerians were removing the aluminium to sell it. Because of smart thinking. They give us bridge, we'll cross express. Smart thinking. The things we call breakthrough converted to two dollars. Small thinking. The way it works is this: whatever is too big, you, see. Excuse me. Can I can I talk? <laughs> What's the budget of Nigeria? What? Trillions in 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 dollars. How much is it? It's about ten billion dollars, right? Is it about ten billion dollars? It's about ten billion dollars. Nigeria's budget, and I hope you know that Nigeria's budget is the biggest in Africa. Just to let you know, put your budget in perspective. When a filmmaker released Avatar, one movie brought in three billion dollars. One movie. When they removed part two, Avatar: The Way of Waters, another almost three billion dollars entered in. You mean one filmmaker had? in box office sales more than half of what 300 million Nigerians are working for excuse me how much is Ronaldo, Ronaldo paid footballers tell me how much is Ronaldo paid huh? his last contract 400 million dollars from every year 400 million dollars every year What's the budget of Zafara every year? You mean so like Ronaldo can write a check and buy the whole state? Sometimes you must realize that we're thinking too small. Someone that is not, he didn't go to school, he plays football. He can drop a check and buy a state. Before you complain, it's not about Nigeria. You must remember that in Africa, Nigeria is still doing well. Because we're number one. That check could buy Ghana or buy some other Benin Republic, the whole country. The reason why is that if you're not careful, you will celebrate what you should not celebrate. And it's small thinking. That's when you get visa. You say, if they give, I'm, I'm grateful they give me visa, but I can never have a visa testimony in my life. The reason why is that if they refuse me visa, they refuse grace. I see. I am the blessing to their country. They are not the blessing to me. If I enter their country, blessing enters. Innovation enters. Let me tell you something. I'm not just talking, you know. Ask my wife. I went to apply for one visa. I went the first time physically. You wait for about three hours to get in. You went the first time. The guy said there was one document missing. I went again. What they called to talk to them. She said, and that document. Every time I go, he said one document was missing the first time. Second time, another document was missing. The third time, and I said, another document was missing. I looked at him. I said, give me my passport. He said, what do you mean? I said, exactly what I said. Give me my passport. I said, I'm not coming back again. I said, look at me very well. I said, do I look, flip through my passport. Do I look like someone that wants to live in your country? Do I look like someone that is jobless? He said, no, no, no. He doesn't got enough to that. I said, no, let me say my mind. Maybe because you've not met someone like me. You know what he told me? He just told me, I still need the documents, but don't come again. Send your PA. He assumed I had a PA. He, he, I didn't tell him I had a He said, send your PA. So bring their shadow documents. And that was it. Glory to God. Mindset is very important too. When Jesus Christ met Peter, he caught nothing. Jesus Christ told him, cast what? Listen, he said, your nets. Peter's mentality said, nets care. Well, we have caught no fish all night. So Peter cast one net. What did he catch? He only caught one net full of fishes. Because all his mind could contain was one net. The manifestation of God's blessing in your life is depending on the nets of mentality that you have. Why do some people do so well? Because their mentality is advanced. So why are you still praying, Father, I need 10,000? They say, Father, give me an oil field. 
Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's begin to close. Wow, I, I thought I was going to go further, but maybe I'll go further in the third service. The next, ment- the next thing, part of mindset, I said the first thing, whatever controls your mind, controls your life. The second thing, whatever is too big for your mind, because I want to show you how to expand your mentality. One of the ways you expand your mentality is exposure. Exposure. Be, the, see, let me tell you something. Eh? So all of you have not traveled before. You must travel. Not when I say travel, not travel and run away. No! Travel and just see what life is outside. That they don't take light. You understand what I'm talking about? Most of you, when you travel, don't you try to iron in case they take light? Yes, because in your mind, you, you think that everywhere they take light. I, I, remember, I remember one of the days I went to Dubai. I was very thirsty because it's very dry. And one of, one of my guys was following me. His name is Ezekiel. And I said, wow, wow, we're very thirsty. Where can we buy water? He said, buy water. We don't buy water here. Enter the shop and ask for water. I, I just turned it. He said, just watch. He said, we need water. And they gave us two bottles. He said, it's cultural for them to give you water. <laughs> That's how I was looking. The reason why, is, you know why exposure is powerful? You will think some things are normal until you step outside. You know, if you have not been to another person's farm, you think your farm is the biggest. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Just for you to know, when we started using screen in our church, I was abused because our church was one of the first churches that used screen and lights. Those of you that were old, remember, I was abused. They say it's a disco hall, it's this, it's that. When they abused. I said, don't worry. We are pace setters, they will come along. All the churches that abused us. When I see them on Instagram right now, I see screen and lights. Only that, where did I get it from? Exposure. I traveled to Australia. I attended the conference in Australia. I was going for three or four years. As I saw things, I said, eh, 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 eh. I came back to do it. The thing is that most people, what you expose yourself to is 10 years of divorce. He lost all the money. Something crashed. And you now begin to reproduce exactly that. I, I, I'm telling you, I went to London. One of my friends was telling me, he said, will you come and see my house? I said, yes. He said, the one I bought for four million pounds. I said, yes. He said, you hope you remember I paid cash. I said, I remember. <laughs> I was in Texas. One of my friends, 28 years old. He said, when you have time, on, I would like to fly you in my plane. He said, yeah, he said, I fly every day. He said that, you know, he walks outside Texas, so he'll fly to the office, fly back. He flies it every day. I, I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Some of us are still doing Uber. Hey. <laughs> because the way you see, see, poverty has even dealt with us. The way you sit down inside the Uber, as if you own the car. You, you will not balance. You will not balance. Oh, oh. Driver, take it to you. Take it to you. Take it to you. The car that is not your own, Jeva, take it easy. Ah, you will not settle. Praise God. Let me close. The third thing, why is the mindset powerful? You, you need to find a way to watch the third service or, you know, stay back or something. Why the mindset is powerful is this. Watch this now. Negative mindset. E. 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 Negative mindset becomes satanic tools to cage and limit people. When Satan wants to destroy someone, he will tell them something. It's always a lie. Let me show you from the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Oh, someone say hallelujah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone say hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. See what the Bible says. How does Satan destroy people? This is the reason why many people are limited, are stagnated. This is why Christians are stuck. Satan will lie to them. Watch it. He says, but I fear by any means as Satan 
deceived Eve through his subtlety. What does it do? So your minds be corrupted. So when Satan wants to destroy someone, he will corrupt the mind. He will put a thought, a lie. See, it's always a lie, but it comes as a thought and becomes a mindset. Look at it. He will tell you a lie. That's why, if you notice in Genesis, as soon as Adam and Eve fell, what did God ask them? Who told you? Because God was saying to them that, who deceived you? Who limited you? Who told you? The question is that, what lie has become a satanic standing to, to hold you? Where's my hot spot? Hot spot. Identify, come quickly. Daniel, come, come, come quickly. Yeah. Just come. You can go that way. So watch this now. When Satan wants to destroy a life, you know what to do? He does. He will just put, just stay. I'll tell you what, just, you have to be good there. Yeah. He will, yeah. When Satan wants to destroy a life, he will just put hot spots there and say, connect to Wi Fi. Once the hot spot is a lie, then you will not by yourself connect to Wi-Fi. What is the lie the devil is telling you? Let me give you some example of lies. Because he lied to me. He said to you, I can't make it in Nigeria. Is it true? It's true if he says it's true to you. It's a lie if he says it's lying to you. And that lie, there's nobody to help me. Is that not a lie to you? One big lie. I have done everything. It's not working. When people tell me that this is how I help them, I'll just bring paper out. Uh, write ten things you did. Then they will write three. And I'll say, ah, you didn't ask for extra shit. I thought you have done everything. But the reason, so, so this is what Satan does. Uh, God wants to give you a breakthrough. Give me a breakthrough. Give me a breakthrough. Give breakthrough. breakthrough. Bring the glass. There's another glass here, right? Come, come, come. The two of you come here. Yeah. The two of you come here. Yeah. So they are both praying for breakthrough. So if you just stand, yeah, or maybe you should stand here because of the camera. Stand here, one here, one here. Yeah. So two of them are praying for breakthrough. So this is breakthrough. Breakthrough is coming. Satan knows he can't stop God from blessing you. Satan also knows he can. All he can do is to work on you. So he will send you a lie. Bring the lie. When he sells you a lie, this is what it looks like. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yep, yep. Bring, bring light, bring light. Is this one coming also, or this one is staying? Good. Thank you. Uh huh. Yeah, that's good. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you know they were praying. Satan will now convince them. I say, mm-hmm. he will be suggesting to them until he puts them there. He will suggest and he will put them inside the line. But yeah, walk towards it. There's what? There's a barrier. The question is, you can see it all, but you cannot touch it. That's why many of you, you can see your blessing that this is it, but you cannot touch it because there's a barrier. The question is, what barrier is this? Let me get some microphones. I want to ask some people here, what lie has been holding you back in your marriage, in your finance, in your health? What lie has been... Raise up your hand. Tell me, my sister. Give me some other microphones on the right. Um, good yeah. morning, church. Good so, morning. This mindset almost actually stopped me from coming What's to the church mindset? today. So the mindset that when things are not going according to how I want yeah. it, it means I have like bad luck naturally. Wow. So the mindset that I have bad luck. See now. And she's praying for a breakthrough. There's a mindset that's bad luck. Huh. Where are the blocks? Bring the blocks. The blocks there. Because this is the first level of lie. It will put that. She can be seeing the breakthrough. It doesn't stop there. Satan is very serious. Put block. Blaze. Yeah, late. No, no, yeah. Okay. On each other. It must go on each other. Uh-huh. Yeah, put beside it. 
This is when it becomes stronghold. It becomes a fortress. You, you know, at one point, you were believing because you could see it. At another point, you will not even see anything again. You've lost hope. You've lost faith. You've lost everything. Bring, 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 bring more block. Bring more block. Bring more block. Continue. Give me another lie. Tell me another lie. Yeah, yeah. Who wants to tell me another lie? That's nice. Tell me, my sister. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get to go to work because I just spend my time sleeping because I feel that diabetics is making me tired. Like what? Diabetics. You just feel that you're tired. I just feel that I'm tired. Every good. Time. Good. Good. We're going there. Yes. Good morning, church. Yeah. So I always think someone will always be better than me. You always think that what? Somebody will always do something better than you. You see? And she's praying that she will be head and not tail. So there's a lie. Keep building, keep building. No, no, you have to put it on each other because they, we must block them out completely. Yeah. Keep building, keep building. Yeah. You always think there's someone. Go to the back, go to the back. There are people that, yes. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, you're always thinking you're unworthy of God's blessings or forgiveness. You think you're unworthy. Did you see that? You know I'm asking for this? The reason I'm asking is that, yeah, yeah, hold on, let me help them around the block. Start plan- balancing it this way. Yeah. Uh huh. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. Mm hmm. Do we need more blocks? <laughs> and you know the thing, eh? The way the blocks are coming one by one, that's how the thoughts come one by one. It's being reinforced gradually. Gradually. Gradually gradually give me more lies give me more lies yeah tell me another one uh-huh okay, tell me what why, why raise up your hand and tell me the li- ah, why are you talking as if you are not a participant yes um good morning church um at times i believe that some things are not for me like i'm not worthy of them, I don't deserve them. i'm not worthy of them let me give you some lies Have you covered their face now? You know, formerly, they could see the blessing. Now, can they see anything? Because they are being cut off. Let me give you some lies. Some lies. Some lies you need to know. I need to be cut off to be rich in Nigeria. You know what that does to you? What that does to you is this. You don't, you don't even try. He said, everybody's corrupt. Who said so? Which, who, who is corrupt? Did you see government money in my pocket? Am I a contractor? But the thing is that the life becomes, look at this now. The lie is here. The lie is here. It, as it's here now, it will begin to be, when it's down, it will not be getting, it will be confining them. Or oh, the block is resting on it. Help me hold the block. Maybe you should take down this one. This one was not properly placed. Praise God. That's the lie. Let me give you some more lies. Some more lies. <laughs> this sickness will kill me. <laughs> yeah. They say when my parents struggle, I will struggle. I can't do it. God's word says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Your own says I can't do it. Are you seeing the light? Another lie is this. Ah. <laughs> I am a failure. Another lie, I cannot recover from loss. I've lost 10 million in business, I can't recover. Another lie, I cannot be global. I cannot do an international company. But the Bible says that in you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Another lie is that I'm a girl. I should not do, I should, I'm not going to go far. Another lie, I have nobody to help me. I can't make it in Nigeria. This sickness will kill me. No one loves me. No one wants to marry me. I don't realize the more you believe the lie, Satan puts you in a cage and begins to build what? So this is what the Bible calls strongholds. What are strongholds? Strongholds are taught that Satan used to cage you. My prayer for you today is this. Every lie that's held back your business, held back your life, the power of God will shatter it in pieces. Shatter it in pieces. Shatter it in pieces. Praise God. What's the lie Satan is telling you? Nobody will marry me. 
you know, some of you, when it's even time to give, the lie is there. God knows I don't have money. That's why you don't tithe. God knows I don't have. He's, he knows. It's not enough. Some of you, when it's time to serve in church, I don't have time. What is the lie? And the longer you believe the lie, the more you stay in the cage. This message is about opening the cage for you and say, brother, come out. Yeah, the lie is still there, but come out. My brother, come out. The question is this, will you keep believing the lie or today will be the day you will come out? Let me tell you something. There's always one day that you know this was true and this is no longer true. Today can be that day. Let us pray.